Hi folks, welcome to this lesson on finding the equations of tangents and normals. In the last lesson, we actually found tangent slopes for the first time, which was fantastic. Um, so let's think about our most basic nonlinear graph, our favorite one, y equals x squared, okay, which looks something like this, and goes up like that. And I could think about the tangent at x equals 3. Okay, maybe it, it looks something like this. Um, and we can find the slope of that now. The question is, how do we actually find the equation of that line? And to find the equation of any line, we use the point-slope formula, which is basically just a rearrangement of the slope formula itself. So to find the equation of any line, you can use this formula. Now, things are named amazingly in mathematics. What do you think you need to know in order to use the point-slope formula? You guessed it. You need to know a point, okay? And that means use the original equation to find a y-value equation. And you need to use slope, okay? So use calculus to find that. Calculus. Okay, so for now, at least, we're saying to find slope, this is what we're going to do. And so if we wanted to actually find the equation of that tangent, it, it wouldn't be that bad. We'd need to know the point. Okay, well, the point is 3 something. 3, oh my gosh, if I want the y value, I just sub in 3 into the function. That gives me 9, because it's 3 squared. Great, we're halfway there. I also need to find the slope. So that would involve finding the slope of the tangent at x equals 3. So that's going to be lim as h goes to 0 of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. We've already found f of 3. That's no big deal. Maybe I'll just go off to the side and figure out what f of 3 plus h is f of 3 plus h would just be 3 plus h all squared, or 9 plus 6h plus h squared. So now we're ready to go. If we want that slope, uh, we have f of 3 plus h, so that's 9 plus 6h plus h squared, minus f of 3, which is 9. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit here to work through this slope stuff. Those 9s will add to 0, so I'll have 6h plus h squared all over h. I can factor. The h comes out. I'm left with 6 plus h here. Those h's divide out. And I can evaluate this limit. Okay, and you can always slow this down or rewind, or pause and try it yourself. It's probably even better. Now we can just go ahead and evaluate that limit. We get 6. That is the slope of the tangent at x equals 3. So remember, to find the actual equation of this green line, we needed to know two things. We need to know the point, which is 3, 9, and the slope, which is 6. Great, now we can plug and chug in the point-slope formula. So it's, this would be x1, y1. So we'd have, let's do this in black, y minus y1, which is 9, equals m, which is 6, x minus x1, which is 3, or 6x minus 18. Or if we added 9 to both sides and put it in y equals form, that would be 6x minus 9. Allegedly, that is the equation of this green line. But seeing is believing, so let's take a look at Desmos. There's y equals x squared. Let's get it to graph 6x minus 9. Does that really look like it's the tangent at x equals 3? Well, yeah, it connects, and it really does look tangential to the graph. Okay, so things are all good. We know that we've done a good job of finding that equation of the tangent. 
there is another line that's called a normal that also meets f of x at x equals 3, or you could do this for any point on any curve. So the normal is perpendicular to the tangent. And perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. So I'm just going to draw what I mean here. Here is the same kind of function. Okay, it's still that parabola. I'm really having a hard time drawing on the iPad. And at 3, 9, there's this tangent. That's the tangent. The normal would be perpendicular to it, okay, so at a right angle. But it's still the same idea. You still just need to know a point and a slope. So if it's at x equals 3, the point is still 3, 9 that we care about here. The slope, well, let's think about that. The slope of the tangent is 6. So the slope of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal, negative 1 sixth. And now we can once again just use point-slope formula to find the equation of that red one. So again, this will be x1, y1. So y minus 9, negative 1 sixth, x minus 3. So that will give us negative 1 sixth x plus 3 over 6, so plus a half. And there are a variety of ways that you could write this. You can add 9 to both sides. Okay, so plus 9 and a half. I don't know. Not a lot of mixed numbers in higher mathematics. So maybe you want to call that 19 over 2. Or maybe you want to call it 9.5. Any of these are okay. The mixed numbers are a little unusual, though. Let's make sure that that's actually the equation. So we've already got the curve and its tangent at x equals 3. Let's see if we put this in negative 1 sixth x plus 19 over 2, or 9.5. Yeah, that looks like it goes through at 3, 9 as well. And it does look perpendicular, or at a right angle, to the blue one, to our tangent. So that is what's going on. Here, we've got uh, a tangent in blue and a normal in green. Now, if you start messing with the scale here, they're not going to look perpendicular to each other anymore. It's only if you have square blocks that they will look perpendicular. But they still will be perpendicular, whatever your scale is. That's really the extent of what we're doing today. We can revisit page 93 and do, you've probably already done part A on these questions, but you can do B and C as well. There are the even answers. If you want to, you can hang out and we'll do one more example that's like this. So find the following for f of x equals 1 over x at x equals 2. So I'm just going to think of the look of this because it's easy to think about the, the look of a, a basic hyperbola or basic butterfly. I want to find what's going on at x equals 2, right here. So first of all, it asked me for the slope of the tangent. So let's think about that. The slope of the tangent at x equals 2 is going to be the limb as h goes to 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h doing the same thing every time to find tangent slopes. I probably want to go off to the side and figure out what f of 2 and what f of 2 plus h are. And they're not so bad. I mean, f of 2 is just 1 over 2. Okay. f of 2 plus h, well, that would be 1 over, wait for it, 2 plus h. So there we go. Now we've got nested fractions, so the way that we'll probably deal with this limit is by multiplying by 2 by 2 plus h. Okay. And when we multiply through, what will we get? 
Well, the 2 plus h's will divide out, so we'll have 1 times 2 minus, and the other one, 1 times 2 plus h. It's so easy to make a sign error that I really recommend that you just play it safe in that first step. And then in the next one, we'll start to work it through. 1 times 2 is 2, minus 2, minus h, all over 2h by 2 plus h. And on top, those 2s add to 0. So we have negative h over 2h by 2 plus h. And here we're ready to go. We can divide some stuff out. These h's will go. And I'll have lim as h goes to 0 of negative 1 all over 2 by 2 plus h. And that you can actually work out, right? You can put in 0, so you'll get negative 1 over 2 by 2 plus 0, or negative 1 quarter. That is the slope of the tangent at x equals 2. So now we know how steep it is, and let's look at it. It does make sense that it's not a big steepness, and it is a negative steepness. If I were to draw the tangent here just roughly, yeah, it's not that steep, and it's going downward. We want to find the equation of the tangent. Well, then we need to know a point and the slope. Okay, so where is this point? The point is at 2, and the y value is a half. We actually already found it. So for b, we know that the point is 2, 1 half. And the slope, well, we found it to be negative a quarter. And if we want the actual equation of that green line that I drew there, pretty terribly, then we need to use that point-slope formula. Or you can use some other fancy technique if you want. I think this is pretty full service, though. So we'd have y minus a half m x minus 2. And keep going here. So that will give us negative a quarter x, and this will be positive 2 quarters, so positive a half. Then if you add a half to both sides, then you'll get negative a quarter x plus 1. That is the equation of tangent line. Okay. Or the equation of this green one that we've got right up here. Part C asks you for the equation of the normal. You can see it's going to be steeper, positive slope. Uh, but a lot of things are going to stay the same. So still, all we need is a point, which stays the same, 2, 1 half, and a slope. Well, the slope of the tangent, this was m tan over here, was negative a quarter. So the slope of the normal is going to be the negative flip. Now, the negative of a negative is a positive. And now, once again, we're just going to plug and chug with our point-slope formula. Not y here, but x. x minus x1. So y minus a half. 4 by x minus 2. So that's y minus a half. 4x minus 8, and you could add uh, 1 half to each side. That'll give you 4x, you could say minus 7.5, or 4x minus 15 over 2. I guess you could say minus 7.5, but we prefer one of these. So same idea here. You're finding point in a slope. If it's the tangent, then you've already found the tangent slope by going through this kind of process. If it's the normal, well, you just take the negative flip. Again, here's some practice stuff from the book. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck with the material, and take care, folks.